Welcome to HSBC Build and Grow, a series that focuses on managing finance for business continuity. As financial stakes center stage in business continuity conversations, your story together with HSBC is proud to present this series, featuring some of the finest minds in the ecosystem to help businesses leverage the financial ingenuity, perspective, and insights from these experts to power their own journey their own continent. Naya, thank you so much for uh, joining and from Mumbai, which is completely locked down right now and still. Tell me, what is this time for your business, for Baby Chakra? What is happening right now? So, Shraddha, uh, lots is happening. I think it's an exciting time. It's an unprecedented time. And I think that word has been used a bunch of times now. But it's <laughs> definitely an unprecedented time for all companies. And I think it's no exception for Baby Chakra as well, right? Hmm. Um, you know, we started off the year, the calendar of thinking we'd go a certain journey. And I think we've had some interesting twists and turns and bumps along the way. Uh, but then, you know, that is what we all sign up for as entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. I think, I think two things that are really uh, interesting for us is that, you know, Baby Chakra has always been a companion for families uh, on parenting, pregnancy, fertility, childcare, right? And the, the focus of the conversations has always been around health, wellness, nutrition, immunity, fertility, you know, all of these topics. So I think we've just seen a massive bump in, um, in just these conversations, right? And I think uh, that's been extremely exciting because, you know, I, I keep on telling my team, we're, we're at a time when, you know, we used to have to evangelize people about the importance of these topics. And now you have the prime minister of India basically going out and saying, build your immunity, build, you know, eat healthy, take care of yourself, stay safe, practice like hygiene, right? So yeah. we have this amazing, I think, movement that's happening that's providing us personally a lot of, I think, strong tailwinds. The second thing that's happened is I think we're seeing a very strong inflection point on all things digital, right? And I think especially on the healthcare ecosystem, that digital transformation is extremely exciting. Um, and just to give you a sense, right? I mean, you know, we work a lot with, uh, with doctors, with HCPs and with, you know, pharma companies and having them sort of interact with our, with our you know, parent base and our communities and to, you know, help families make like good choices, right? And over the last three months, we've had an influx of doctors actually wanting to work with Baby Chakra. So instead of us going out and knocking their doors and saying, do you want to work with us? They are coming in and saying, hey, how can we work together? Right. Wow. So we've actually been creating a bunch of very interesting solutions for both sort of doctor engagement, uh, patient retention, patient engagement, and also sort of doctors who just generally uh, understand how this ecosystem of parents is really thinking and analyzing this space. So yeah, I mean, wow. absolutely, extremely exciting times. Wow, wow, very, very happy, very encouraging, you know, very happy to hear this and it's so, so encouraging. Tell me, Naya, one of the things I think we would owe, you know, complete credit for you and your team is that you've been able to build a community, you know, you've been able to build a very distinct, uh, strong community uh, through Baby Chakra. Tell me, what has it meant to build a community? Because it's not easy, it's yeah. very tough and, and, uh, and, and, and it takes a lot. So tell us if you have to look back and say, okay, these are some of the things that led to this in such a wonderful way, which you guys were able to do. I mean, Shraddha, given that you have built the, probably the largest community of entrepreneurs, I mean, I think you would relate to sort of what it takes yeah. to build our communities, right? But uh, I think there are, uh, I think there are three very distinct, uh, you know, maybe as I introspect, I think three very distinct sort of lessons, if you will, or sort of insights, yeah. if you will, I took away, right? So there is, first of all, I think there's no one way to build a community. I think it depends on who you're building the community for. Right. So, you know, very early on, we were in this rat race of user numbers, badhana hai, get all the users, dao maus, badhao. And, you know, eventually we look back and we looked at this analysis, we're like, what are we building? Because we're not a social network, right? We're yeah. a companion to families. We need to be meaningful to them at the point of interaction with them and the point of engagement with them. And we should stand for credibility and trust. Yeah. Right? So I think that really was a very big, I think, almost like an aha moment, Shraddha, for us. And I think it was one of those moments where you kind of step out of this treadmill that every entrepreneur is running off at a certain time and look at your company and what you're building and who are you building for and what does value mean there. Yeah. Right? So I think that was one big insight. And I think the mom's community or the parents community is exactly that. It's not a community which, I mean, frankly, it is a large, it's a very large play. There's no yeah. doubt about it. Every third family in India pretty much has a child below five. 
right? So yeah. it's a very large play. But the point is not that. The point is it's not a Dao Mao game. It's a game of at the point when you're engaging them, are they really trusting you, right? Yeah. And the lead thing, Baby Chakra was my companion to this very critical point in time. So that's the first insight. I think I'll just like, you know, I've, I've been thinking about this as well. I've had time to think about this. Fine, <laughs> right? I think the second thing that I think uh, we realized was a community is also a factor of its who is that community, right? And what creates trust? And we realize, of course, having, you know, it's like you walk into a party, you look around and you're like, okay, this person's also there, that person's also there. Ah, this party will be fun and will be good and will be trustworthy. I can spend the entire evening and the night in this party, right? So very similarly, we identified those folks, you know, who create trust. And of course, one was the other parents. That's a given. You come in, you see parents engaging, not asking anonymous questions. They're actually asking, divulging the identity asking very sensitive questions. So you're like, oh, this is a trustworthy, safe yeah. company. But importantly, they're also very more traditional nomicers of trust, like doctors, right? So I think the whole doctor piece is something we picked up over the last year where doctors are now coming in. And you know, when a parent walks in and says, are doctors are spending time on this platform? Kuch to hai, right? Huh. I think that immediately creates a bonding and a self of like, you know, trust and all of this other piece, right? And I think the third piece, which I think is very given is, you know, a companion or a, or a community is like knowing you intimately, right? That's what really creates that bond. Yeah. And, you know, I think very early on, again, something we worked hard on and we're seeing the benefits of it play out today is the personalization to each family who uses us, right? So not, it's not like a one size fits all solution. Yeah. You come mm. in, we take a lot of data from you upfront, a lot of implicit, explicit sort of insights about you that we sort of use to sort of personalize the experience of baby chakra along the way, right? And I think that really creates community. So I think those are the three things I sort of, you know, I've been also thinking about this. I'm like, what's really working? So I think yeah. these three things are really sort of working for us. I have huge respect for what you've built because it sounds like we all know it's a very large community. We all know that it's a very valuable community from a business perspective also, but also it's a very fluid community, right? And just getting them together and building a very cohesive, distinct and personalized platform is not easy. It's yeah. not easy and you've done that. Naya, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is that I was reading that uh, you're starting some community-led uh, commerce on the platform. Um, I, so I don't know how that's been represented. It's not necessarily community-led commerce. It's actually community-created so I'll, I'll tell you what, maybe that context has been nicely sort of uh, uh, twisted and sort of interpreted to me, <laughs> right, as usual. So basically, you know, Shada, we as a companion to families, right, we have to basically, you know, solve their problems and we yeah. have to help them make the right choice at the right time, right? And of course, one of the big problems we're solving is the, you know, the context of what to do with your child at what point in time, how to take care of yourself, what to eat, getting the right care, etc. right? That's a digital sort of platform of care that we've created, the ecosystem of care that we've created for each family, right? But the moment dug and it was like digging and, you know, trying to understand what do our users really need? And we were like, listen, on the phone, we found a solution. Emotionally, we found a solution. But actually in the houses, we also need to create solutions, right? Uh -huh. So basically what parents told us, and this was really crazy, Shraddha, and I think that's again been a big, like, I think I've, I've learned to respect, <laughs> I think what we do a lot more because of that. In November last year, right, we were looking and a, a lot of parents told us that they needed products around sort of hygiene and sort of taking care of the child. And there were no products that exist in the market, for instance, which were baby safe and child safe around sanitizers, hand washes, fruit and vegetable washes. This is in November, Shraddha, mind you, before all this COVID sort of hit us, right? And so we started formulating this. We did about, you know, a bit of inventory financing, formulated this, and we launched actually in the first week of March before, again, COVID pretty much hit India. If you remember, you know, the 7th, 8th of March was when everything started, like the alarm started blaring. Yeah, everything. yeah. We're in the lockdown, right? So first week of March, like first March we launched and like literally in three weeks, we were out of stock. We had stocked up for three months. We were out of stock in three weeks, right? Wow. And these products, the reason I give credit to the, the reason they work is because we created them with communities. Yeah. So our mothers actually from November, December, January, February were actually working with us. Doctors were working with us and saying these formulations, this branding, this pricing, this positioning, this sort of fragrance, these ingredients, this packaging, right? Uh, this is how I'd like to distribute it. So I think those were, I think one of those aha moments again for us where we were like, this is what we are building, right? Really creating solutions with the community for the community. So you, you brand it as baby chakra products? Yeah, so Shada, right now it's baby chakra products because, you know, it was an experiment. It was like, hey, can we, yeah, yeah. it sounds like it's a problem. Can we solve it, right? 
And I think we we started by saying, okay, what do we solve for? And we had all these names, right? And uh, the community actually came back saying, why don't you just call it Baby Chakra? Because we know the name. And it's the yeah. easiest way to launch. But, you know, honestly, going forward, I do think there will be some, you know, areas, again, based on insights, based on conversations with experts and communities, which will require a lot more deeper, um, you know, I think, involvement. And therefore, the micro brands that we can create as a result will also reflect in the names, right? So the name yeah. is not like for a mom, if you're creating something or for a certain other like problem statement you're creating something, maybe Baby Chakra is not the most appropriate name. No, but it's a nice name, Baby Chakra. <laughs> it's a nice I'm name. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> it was the only dot com available with baby in it at that point in time, <laughs> so we took it. <laughs> no, but it's very distinct, no, Baby Chakra. It is. It is. Yeah. What, according to you, Neha, as an entrepreneur, you think gives you a very distinct advantage in this space? I think, again, it goes back to the fundamentals, right, Shradha? Uh, you know, I mean, it's like looking around and saying, oh, there's so many amazing publications that cover entrepreneur stories, right? But there's something special about your story, right? I mean, all of us pretty much started off our journey. I remember moving back from Boston. And, and you know, the, one of the reasons I moved back from Boston was because of your story. I was reading <laughs> stories and I was like, wow, there's so much amazing stuff happening back in India. <laughs> yeah, but it's true, right? So there's a special connect. There's a special sort of resonance of the brand, right? So I think that's one thing and I can't quantify it. I can't qualify it. Like there's no way to describe it, right? Yeah. It is a distinct, I think, trust, belief, uh, I think love that I've seen our families have for Baby Chakra, right? And I mean, I give you the example that we launched on Amazon, for instance, on a private label, right? And it was sold out in three weeks. So we called up the users and the, the, not users, but the customers, right? I never say customer. That's why it's, it's an alien concept to me. But we called them up and said, why do you buy it? Right? Because uh. we haven't had any marketing, right? We've done nothing. And they were like, because it's baby chakra, uh, right? So there's something so interesting and so differentiated. About, and I, I've learned to respect it a lot more now, like about the brand. Uh, and I think that's a big differentiation, right? Which you can't quantify, you can't qualify. No amount of technology can replace that. I mean, it doesn't, yeah, yeah. doesn't matter, right? Yeah, 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 so yeah. That's the first piece, right? I think that's the biggest piece, I think, that differentiates us. And of course, the idea is to keep on building these relationships of trust and partnerships that create more. I think the second piece, I think, that differentiates us is, I think, you know, when you look across the whole product, you look across the entire sort of experience of Baby Chakra, it's all centered around you as an individual, you know, and I keep on saying that I think that relevance and personalization is key. A lot of it is created by, of course, our, you know, our tech stack and the algos that learn along the way. But a lot of it is also just created by the fact that we just worked and heard so many mothers, like millions of mothers over the last couple of years. So we kind of like intuitively like sort of predict what they need. Right. And I think that experience is very, very differentiated. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, somewhere I think there should be a very, a, a huge premium and quantification to what you are saying. Like, and, and I think we both recognize that mm -hmm. trust and care and empathy and, and genuine authenticity of the brand. Because I think that stands, so it stands the test of time, yeah. if one can say. What are some of the things that you're planning now? It's a very different world that we are living in. So tell me how... Again, tell me some of the key learnings that you've had as a business in the last few months. And what are some of the things that you're planning in the current new normal, if one may say? <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think as a business, I think, uh, and for all of us, it's been an interesting time, right? It's been a challenging time because yeah. I think there were certain, you know, uh, expectations on how the, you know, the revenue run rate would go and, you know, surprise, surprise, it's COVID, right? So everything is kind of like a different way. And I think there's certain opportunities that open up which you didn't anticipate. And you're like, wow, this could be an amazing way for me to grow, right? Yeah. So I think over the last three, four months as a team, we've done a lot of introspection, right? And I think two avenues for us open up very, very strongly. The first avenue is to continue building on our relationships with doctors and HCPs, right? Mm -hmm. I think that is a no-brainer. And I think, you know, given that they are gravitating towards us, plus we've been able to do a couple of very strategic partnerships, which facilitate scaling that out mm. quite rapidly, right? Mm. I think that's a no-brainer. It adds a lot of value to the community of parents as well. It adds a lot of value to the HCPs as well, right? So mm. I think, you know, that is something we definitely want to over-index and sort of and grow out. And I think that's a great way to also grow out the community, right, in, uh, in, in many ways. Um, the second thing we're looking at is, you know, given that we've gone down a certain journey and, I, you know, we've learned to respect our data and insights a lot more in terms of product uh, co-creation with our communities, right? the physical product co-creations, we certainly want to continue going down that journey. I think there were certain products in the pipeline, which we're pushing out for later, certain ones we're bringing forward, 
right? Given the environment we are in, given, you know, multiple things like the, the, the proposition, uh, the pricing, the distribution strategy, et cetera, right? So I think that's the other piece that we've sort of, you know, like kind of done a bit of a, like again, an introspection, a bit of a retrospective on. Uh, but I think that journey is very clear. So as a business, I think our two sort of lines of growth and revenue and monetization are extremely, extremely clear for us, right? Uh, and I think that's the way forward. And, and, you know, fortunately, I think even over this period, uh, there is a third, there, there, there is a vertical, which was, you know, which was the brand's vertical. We were working with all the top brands in the space, you know, pharma companies, FMCGs, helping them with sort of getting, you know, access, like, and just conversations with our consumers or getting sort of consumer insights, et cetera, which in the period of May was a little bumpy because even brands were trying to figure out what is happening in the ecosystem. Right. But I think all that's back on track. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think, you know, brands realize that this is a great time. And I think digital is the only way and the best way today to build even a more solid relationship with your uh, constituents, right? So I think that's yeah. what well for us. I want to ask you as an entrepreneur, as someone who's built this business, what if you had to look today, and you know, we have the time right now to reflect a bit. If you had to look at your own journey so far and say, okay, these are some of the things, more or less, I got it right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and these were some of the things which I wouldn't have learned had I not made the journey. I mean, so many things, Shraddha. I think yeah. that would require a whole conversation for both of us, right? Separately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, but you know, I think, uh, I think, you know, I do want to call out because, um, you know, and I don't think we talk enough about it. Uh, and I've, I've realized it matters. I mean, I do want to call out that it matters that I'm a woman. It matters therefore the journey I have taken. And, you know, it's no use sort of being an ostrich and hiding my head in the sand and not acknowledging that being an important piece of my journey. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, I think, uh, and I've talked about this in the past, but I think one instance I definitely want to call out is both the support as well as sort of, not the lack of support, but I think the skepticism I faced because yeah. of my gender, right? And, and my ability to build something really meaningful, large and valuable, right? So I think if I look back, what have I learned from it is to have more belief in myself and to surround myself with people who believe in me, right? I, I, I agree. Are, <laughs> right? I think that's like, oh, that's like one the one biggest like the biggest takeaway I would take yes. away from my journey right and I tell all yes. my teammates I tell all my you know entrepreneur friends who are starting off now just believe in yourself because you know your stuff better than anyone and you know yourself better than anyone does out there right yeah so you know I think that's that's for me my, but my, you know that but that's also something we have to go through the process and then that only is learn. true yeah. it's like you know yeah. that uh, like that, that that whatever refining by fire or whatever yeah. that phrase is right you have to be tempered yeah. by fire to realize you're, you're sharp as steel or whatever yeah. you know you have to think like that so I think that's the first big insight and like I think even acknowledgement I've had along the way I think the second really, I mean, and I know this is so cliche, but really, I think team matters so much. And when I talk about team, it's not only about the operating team and the team that's building with you, but also your team of investors, your team of partners, your team of well-wishers, right? A team of fellow entrepreneurs who are peers to you, who are building with you in this journey. The conversations you have with them keep you sane, right? Yeah. So your team, like the team that's really working with you to make you successful, to champion you, to talk about you, right? Yeah. It's critical yeah so, yeah i think these are the two things that really take away and if you had to tell to all the young new entrepreneurs just getting started one from something that you wish you had got it right and someone would have told you besides the belief so, um, you know, honestly, I do think like way back in 2017, uh, 2018, we were pushed and I'm fully responsible for that push. Like I told you, right. I mean, this whole thing about just scale. <laughs> right? All of I mean, us. All of us. Right. It was all of us. But I mean, the point is I got sucked into it. Right. And I will call it out in the open. Right. This whole thing was scale, scale, scale for the sake of numbers, for the sake of like just showing growth. Right. Yeah. You know, I think, and it never, it always felt a little alien to me, but you know, I was like, no, maybe I'm just like, maybe I'm wrong. Right. Because yeah. everyone's right. Everyone can't be wrong. So maybe I'm everyone wrong. is so confident around it. Right? Exactly. Right? right. I mean, so I think that is the one thing I think like in future, this is one instance, right? In future, I'm sure there'll be like five other instances like this, right? Which are like, and I think always staying true to your, like what you believe will create value, being open, being flexible, being like listening, right? Yeah. But then filtering and then being true to what you believe creates it's value and creates genuine value uh, yeah. for who you're building for. 
Wow, wow. I'm, I, I, you know, it just, it feels like I'm talking to myself. For everyone watching this, Naya, if you have to say, what's the big, big dream that you are seeing with Baby Chakra? So, I mean, Shadha, the, the idea and, you know, I moved back to India and I spent like, I think probably like my team has spent the best years of their lives building this, right? And I think that the vision here is to really, really be a companion to families um, in India and then over time across the world, right? Through their journey uh, of what is probably the most critical life stage you face as a human being right? The journey of fertility, the journey of pregnancy, yeah. the journey of childcare, because, you know, it is a journey where, I mean, you kind of go back to the roots of what it means to, um, you know, be an individual, to have a certain construct where you are changing, right? Yeah. Like, as you know, it changes. Uh, and especially for women, I think it, it changes a lot. Uh, so it's important to preserve your identity, but it's also to, important to acknowledge the change and therefore to have someone to support you through that change. So if you can be a companion to families across India, you know, raise the next generation of happy, healthy Indian moms and kids and then scale it across the world. I mean, I'd go to sleep and I'd say, peak potential achieved. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Wow. And we all hope that you achieve this because in your success would be the success of the country, of people, of mothers, right? Of families. Naya, tell us about your fundraising journey because, uh, you know, you've built a very distinct brand and you have also got good investors. Tell us what excited them because, and again, I'm asking this to you for all the potential uh, opportunities which entrepreneurs would be looking at and and, and people would be, uh, you know, looking at raising money and they can learn from you. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I think Radha, I talked about this a little bit earlier when I said your team is most critical. And when I talked about team, I meant the team of investors and partners as well who believe in you, right? And who believe in what you're looking to build, right? I think, uh, you know, the promise of building out something for parents in India when I was starting off was a very sort of obtuse promise, right? No one really understood. And they were, you know, I mean, people were looking at me and you've come back after this amazing set of experiences, professional, education-wise, to build out, like, what, a, a blog? You know, like, <laughs> and, you know, and I was like, even if it's a blog and it's successful and creating the impact it is, I'll be very happy, right? I mean, <laughs> but, but, you know, you had to, like, you did really sort of evangelize. And I think today yes. the opportunity needs no evangelization, right? Yes. So I think for a lot of entrepreneurs out there, you know, you might be facing walls, you might be facing, sort of, you might be at, like, you might be hitting your head against the wall saying, I have the opportunity, no one else does. But guess what? I mean, if you're seeing an opportunity and if, I mean, of course, you're able to quantify it, you're able to sort of triangulate smartly with your user base and, you know, like look at this objectively as well with a few people you trust and it exists. I mean, those are the opportunities really worth going after. You know, you will face situations where there will be, you know, counterintuitive bets that you as an entrepreneur really believe in. And I think that's really where the value can be created. Uh, And hence to look for people who support you in some counterintuitive bets, you have to see people who've taken counterintuitive decisions in their lives, right? So, you know, I've been lucky. I mean, we have amazing angels as well. Like, you know, for instance, uh, Anand Chandrasekharan, Anant Narayanan, you know, um, Maninder Gulati. I mean, these are all, they've all sort of been through a very counterintuitive set of decisions in their lives, right? They've seen these bets play out in their portfolio companies at scale. And apart from that, of course, like our large institutional investors, the funds, right? So I think that's really when you go out and you seek partners in investors, I think you should look for people who maybe been through counterintuitive journeys themselves and therefore able to spot large, large opportunities with you. And you've done that. And, and congratulations to you, uh, Naya. Last, to all the entrepreneurs as of today, because everyone, all of us are facing very, very difficult times, right? Like all of us, it is hard, it is depressing and, and it is very, very uncertain. As an entrepreneur who is dealing with it and, and, and is, continues to resiliently smile and, and move it, move through it. And I feel so energy. And I'm asking you because I feel energy, you know, with our conversation uh, and I feel your positivity. What would you say? What are you doing mentally, emotionally to keep yourself in this shape? And, and, and what would you tell to entrepreneurs? Right now, I think when things get tough, I have an, I have an approach, right? Which is to take one day at a time, right? Yeah. And I think the beauty of entrepreneurship and being an entrepreneur is the next day things change. <laughs> right? I mean, because they just do. I mean, actually, it's for both better or for worse, to be honest. But like, yeah. nonetheless, right? And I think you have to, like, before becoming an entrepreneur, through the journey of entrepreneurship, I think over time, you find increasing comfort with that change. Yes. Right. Uh, so even the worst days after a bit say this too shall pass. And even the best days you're like this too shall pass. Yeah. Right. 
So I think that moment for me has come over the last year because before that I used to get very perturbed. Now I'm a little bit more, I think, a little bit more equanimity. No, Shraddha, I think that for me has been, a, you get it, right? I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that for me has been the big, like, sort of, uh, I, and I think I'm so grateful that's happened, right? And I think the second thing that's kept me a lot centered, a part of us, of course, my team and sort of the, you know, the, the fun we have over Zoom when we are sort of brainstorming, etc. I had a child about 15 months back, right? Wow. And her name Congrats. is Arya. Yeah, she's, she's, she's a joy, right? And I think when I look at her, I just feel like there is, it's not like my life revolves around her at all. I'm not one of those mothers, to be honest. And I don't know if it's bad for business that I'm saying it so loudly <laughs> and openly, yeah. right? But I am someone who really believes that, you know, for her to be happy, I need to be happy. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So, <laughs> so I think, you know, I have had to, therefore, you know, for her and for myself, find ways to what gives me joy and happiness over index on those and to kind of outsource the rest that don't give me joy and happiness for the most part, wow. as much as I can have it happen. So yeah, I think that's just my, not advice, but it's my experience. And No, yeah. no, but this is so powerful. This is so powerful. Absolutely authentic, very powerful and so very true. I think all of us can take this. I'm not saying that we have to like imbibe it. We have to process this, what you're saying. Because it's very, very powerful that we will be happy. Then only we can make anyone happy around us. So thank you. Thank you.